On the 4th of March 2021, the brand new Royal Research vessel Sir David Attenborough was at anchor carrying out familiarisation drills when one of the lifeboats fell from its davits, got dragged over the side of the ship and plunged bow first into the water. Fortunately there were no serious injuries but it could easily have been so much worse. So what happened? How could safety critical equipment on a brand new ship malfunction in such a dangerous way? But before we get to the answer, let me just take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products based on a preference quiz they fill out. They've got awesome clothes, cool stuff for your house, camping and cooking gear, basically just high quality stuff in every category. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right in the US. For example, the Weekender box comes with this line of trade hardware and carry-all, while the wet box, designed for knife sharpening, comes with a set of three Arkansas oil stones, a non-slip silicon base, premium honing oil and a wood storage box. They now offer a new membership program where you can get really great deals all year round. I'm talking like 30% off or more sometimes and it's totally free to join. You get to preview your member shipment before it's sent. You'll get a customised selection of products picked for you and before it's shipped you can preview what's inside, decide if you'd like to keep it, swap out products or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. To get a free mystery gift with your first membership purchase, click the link in the description and enter casual gift at the checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash casual gift. Construction of the RRS Sir David Attenborough began in 2016 and lasted around four years until she was handed over to her owners on the 2nd of December 2020. During that time, the hull was pieced together in sections and then outfitted with all the gear and equipment it would need to operate as a polar research vessel. This included two polar class 90 person lifeboats, one each for the port and starboard side, secured in davits so that they could easily be launched in an emergency. The system was manufactured in 2017 and delivered to the shipyard in September 2018 where it was placed into storage until installation which was finally completed in November 2019, just over a year before the vessel was handed over. Unfortunately, somewhere along that timeline, one of the clips for the remote control wire was lost, so the yard replaced it with a similar but slightly larger one. The remote control wire is the one that allows you to launch the lifeboat from inside, so that no one is left on board if you have to abandon ship. It runs from the davits, through a gland in the top of the lifeboat and down to the helmsman's position. What the engineers found, however, was that the new clip was too big to fit through that gland in the top of the lifeboat, so they needed to enlarge the hole before the installation could be signed off. Anyway, with the system now working, it was signed off as complete in February 2020 and assumed to be ready for operation. Just over a year later, in March 21, and now in the possession of her owners, she was at anchor off the Isle of Mull in Scotland, providing an ideal opportunity for the crew to complete some training and practice launching and recovering survival craft. During the morning, they successfully drilled with the fast rescue craft before moving on to the lifeboats. The lifeboat launching sequence basically consists of extending the davits over the ship's side and then lowering the boat down to the water by releasing a gravity controlled brake which secures the fall wires. The brake is cylindrical in nature with a weight providing leverage to keep sufficient friction between the drum and the pads. You simply lift the weight and the brake is released, let go and gravity reapplies it in a fail safe kind of way. Anyway, the first couple of launches were completely manual. Someone on the deck above operated a switch to extend the davits out and then someone else lifted the brake to lower the boat. After three cycles, they then wanted to test the dead ship remote operation, which is what it would be like if there was no power available to swing the davits out. In this situation, hydraulic accumulators provide the energy and the davit movement is activated from the directional control valve. The idea is that you can pull on the remote control wire, which leads back to the winch system around the directional control valve and up to the brake release arm. If the davits are not fully extended, a hydraulic interlock just here prevents the brake from moving so only the directional control valve is activated. This moves the davits out and swings the boat over the ship's side, after which the hydraulic interlock releases and the tension in the remote control wire lifts the brake and lowers the boat. At any point, you just let go of the remote wire and the launch process stops. On this occasion, however, what no one noticed was that following the previous raising and lowering of the boat, the hydraulic interlock had not returned to its locked position. When they pulled on the remote control wire, the brake released at the same time as the davit started to move. The boat dropped down to the deck and rolled onto its side as the davits continued to extend. 
At this point you would normally let go of the remote control wire to stop the process, but due to the angle of the boat and possibly the different clip that had been fitted or the modified through hull fitting, it got caught so the launch process was impossible to stop. As the boat continued to be dragged over the side, the front fall wire detached from the hook meaning that the boat swung bow down and dropped nose first into the water. Fortunately, on this occasion no one was seriously injured, but it does really serve to highlight how dangerous lifeboat launching arrangements can be, and why it's so important to fully understand how they work and what went wrong. We've already mentioned the different clip that was used on the remote operation wire, but as with every other incident, that wasn't the only thing. There were plenty of other missed opportunities to break the sequence of events. Firstly, it turns out that the system hadn't actually been installed correctly. There should have been a launching station installed on the boat deck, providing a single place for all the control wires to lead without the need for people operating different parts from different decks. And there should have been additional training wires in place so that the drill they undertook could have been performed with no one on board. Essentially, there would be a wire from the directional control pin to the launching station to extend the davits in dead ship mode, then another wire from the brake to the launching station to lower the boat. Neither one was in place, so the only way of drilling a dead ship remote launch was from inside the lifeboat. This leads us to the next missed opportunity, which was that none of the commissioning surveys noticed that the system had been installed wrong. There were all manner of experts from different agencies and organisations inspecting the ship, but none of those inspections seemed to involve comparing the actual installation of the lifeboats to the instructions from the manufacturer. Next, the reason that the hydraulic interlock pin didn't engage was that its surface had degraded to such an extent that the springs inside it couldn't re-engage it after it had been released. Ordinarily, the planned maintenance system would have scheduled regular checks of all that sort of equipment, but the planned maintenance wasn't completed while the ship was under construction. This meant that in the 12 months between installation and handover, no checks were recorded. Then, once the ship was handed over, the planned maintenance system was temporarily suspended by the owners due to the number of defects and the workload falling on the vessel's crew to try and get the ship ready. The lack of routine maintenance meant that the hydraulic interlock pin hadn't undergone any inspection since its installation 16 months prior, so it just degraded unnoticed. Finally, the last opportunity to break the chain of events came during the drill itself when nobody checked the pin had reset between each launch. This was probably due to unfamiliarity with the system because it was a new system on a new vessel and none of the crew had attended the training recommended by the lifeboat's manufacturer. Coupled with the incorrect installation, meaning that the system didn't actually match the training manuals, meant that mistakes were inevitable. As I say, fortunately in this case there were no serious injuries, so it has instead become an ideal learning opportunity that perfectly demonstrates what can happen when boats are not installed and operated in the way that the manufacturer recommends. If you'd like more information about this accident, the report is available from the Marine Accident Investigation Branch, who share them under the Open Government Licence with the sole aim of preventing future accidents through the ascertainment of the causes and circumstances of events just like this. Before we go, I'd just like to extend a massive thank you to the channel's plus supporters on Patreon. Your support helps keep these videos free to view across social media. Without you, I couldn't keep doing this, so thank you so much.